and welcome to Life is Spiritual presents the Erica documentary part three. My name is Tim, also known as Bamboo African Bantu, and I'm your host, and I'm here with my beautiful wife Erica, and we will be talking about the continuation of the things that we discussed in part two and part one. And these things are concerning the kingdom of darkness and they are designed to expose the kingdom of darkness in fulfillment of the words of Jesus Christ spoken in Luke chapter eight, verse 17. He said, there is nothing kept secret that will not come to light and whatever is hidden away will be brought out into the open and whatever is covered up will be found out. And Luke chapter 12, verse 2 and 3, Jesus spoke and said again that there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. And he instructed us that whatever we hear, we shout it out on the rooftops because we are children of light and we expose the darkness. And Satan needs darkness or ignorance in order for his kingdom to flourish. Satan flourishes where his operations are not known. But once the light comes, he is restricted in the extent of his operation. So I'd like to welcome my beautiful wife, Erica, to continue. And before we start, we'll say a word of prayer, but say hello. Yes. Greetings. Let me start by introducing myself as Erica Mukisa Kimani, or Mama Maisha, a.k.a. Mami Zion. But before we start uh, with this documentary, it's very important that we start with a word of prayer. Amen. Mm. And so let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give thanks for the gift of life. We give thanks for the finished works of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. We thank you for the precious Holy Spirit who is bringing to pass every word that Jesus spoke. We thank you for Erica's salvation and for her deliverance and for everything that she saw and heard in that place, that it may be revealed and that the saints may be well equipped in fulfillment of your word in Revelation where the church was dressed in a gown that shined like the sun and a crown of 12 stars was over her head and the moon was under her feet, meaning that the powers of darkness were firmly under her feet. And so, mighty Father, in fulfillment of that scripture and in fulfillment of your word, we thank you for what is being revealed here. We apply the blood of Jesus to every soul and their household and their businesses and, every, and everything they set their hand to do. We apply the blood of Jesus upon them. There shall no evil befall them, neither shall any plague come near their dwelling. We thank you that as the word proceeds, it inspires faith and hope and grace, not fear and trepidation. And we thank you, mighty Father, that your will is coming to pass in the lives and the hearts of those that hear these words and that the kingdom of God may be established forever and ever. We honor you, Holy Spirit, and ask you to take preeminence in this conversation that you may bring light. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen, amen, amen and amen. amen. Yeah, I'm so excited about this documentary because I'm exposing uh, Satan. And remember, Satan tormented me when I was serving him. In the last documentary, I spoke about Satan and I tried to describe him. Well, I didn't do all the description. I, I said what I could within the time that we had. So today, I just want to continue uh, exposing Satan. Uh, when I saw Satan, I realized that what we had been seeing on TV, you know, how they show Satan with uh, some black being dressed in a red outfit with horns and things like that. But this time when I was now coming face to face with Satan, I described to you how gifted he was and some of the things I saw in him. The other thing I saw Saturn having was a, a, a grayish skin, pale. It is pale. His skin is not black. It is pale. And then sometimes it would be transparent. When it would be transparent, like the way you look at the water, you cannot tell the color of the water. That is when he was going to shine. 
in the different dimensions, the colors, the stones that were built in him, the precious stones. That's when they would bring that light and that's when he would turn pale and, and, and he would shine so bright. That's why um, there's a secular artist who sang that shone bright like a diamond. And this secular artist also came out and she confessed that um, she's a devil worshiper. And she laughed about it, but people did not understand. When we tell you that uh, people have sold their souls to Satan, many people think it is conspiracy theory. They think it is something that has just been, you know, framed. People don't understand what they are talking about, but I understand what I'm talking about because I was initiated and I saw Saturn with my eyes. I saw Saturn. And the other thing I, I discovered is not all the time he manifests with horns. Sometimes we would see the horns. Sometimes he would just look so beautiful because the Bible says he was beautiful. He, he was created perfectly until iniquity was found in him. So uh, I would sing something so different from what the media was showing me. The other thing I saw is that Saturn has uh, two appearances. He can look like a man and then he can look like a woman. So uh, even when you look at the satanic symbols, the Baphomet symbol, he's male and female. And that's why they are pushing this gay agenda. Now they have stopped calling themselves the the LGBTQ now, it's a queer community. I'd like to thank my beautiful husband, my beautiful three children who are at home watching. I'd like to thank the queer community for your love and for inventing this genre. God bless you. Thank you. So when I witnessed that, I now got disappointed because all along I had been deceived. What the media does is to deceive. Saturn came to steal, kill, and to destroy, but Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So now I saw, I witnessed when I was in the kingdom of darkness, I witnessed in Satan's kingdom, they have an altar in the middle of a certain huge hall. In this hall, this is the, the source of their power, where they get their power from. They uh, it's, it's a very huge hall. I cannot uh, describe how big it was because it would expand depending on how many people are going to attend a ceremony when they are going to sacrifice. And on the side of the hall was a prison where they would cage babies. I don't know where they were getting these babies from, but one thing I know is that some of these celebrities have a funding orphanages especially in Africa, where they have children that are brought to those orphanages and then they take those children to those places for sacrifice. So I saw many babies in those, in those cages. They were putting them in cages like you can put a dog in a cage or a cat in a cage. You know those cages that are made with um, metals and they are just squatting in those cages and holding onto those bars and they are crying, they are so desperate, they are starved for some time. And then they place those children on that altar and they start defiling them, they start sodomizing these kids, they start beating them. Some of these children, they would get them and bash their heads on the wall until, you, I don't know how to explain it, until you cannot see that this was a head. That is how bad Saturn was. And they would sometimes place them on an altar and pierce them and pull out their hearts and eat. These are people who have sold their souls to the devil. And even in their music, some of them perform rituals when they are, when they are singing in their videos. They perform rituals. You see those rituals of blood, them act their, in their music videos with dead bodies. and uh, You see them taking photos when they are eating a heart and blood is dripping, we'll be showing you some of the things so that you understand what I'm talking about. These people do these things in real life. And that is the source of their power. That is where they get their power from. They are evil. They have gone 
to that extent where they don't have their hearts have been hardened they don't feel anything they don't have emotions because any human being with a soul will feel sorry for a child even if the child does not belong to them but because they have sold their souls to the devil they are under control they are being controlled by the enemy they do everything that satan wants and I'm sorry guys remembering those things is it's so terrible because the man you know it's interesting that you said that because Jesus spoke these exact words Jesus says in Luke 17 verse 1 and 2 then said he unto the disciples it is impossible but that offenses will come but woe unto him through whom they come it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones so jesus was talking about these little ones he was talking about children and what jesus was saying was that he knew basically he knows that the kingdom of darkness functions by the blood of innocence by the lives of the innocent hmm and yet he put it in such a way that we would know what he meant later on when all things were being revealed yeah so sorry you you had to see that but yeah it's so terrible people when i'm talking about this is because i just want you to get saved and I, i want you to escape the traps of the enemy satan is the worst being you can ever work for is the worst being you can ever find yourself with you don't even want to be any any closer to him just even looking at him is traumatizing the things that he does i would witness these babies screaming in pain they would scream crying these are orphans you know these people come as if they are as if they are so kind as if they are so caring and then they they use they use people who are desperate for money they give them some money they they register orphanages and and NGOs and then they start trafficking these children and then they take them uh, in those cages and then from there they would sacrifice them they would uh, some of them they would just use them and and steal their stars and steal their destinies by sodomizing them and then they bring them of course even if they brought them into the limelight their stars have been taken and it is a celebrity shining with another another person is star and these children are enslaved they are being sodomized they are being uh, you find a celebrity has adopted a child and turned if it is a boy turned the boy into a girl it, 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 you don't know what happens behind the scenes those children those children are traumatized the things they go through behind the scenes are terrible i cannot stand talking about them in detail but that bashing of their heads and you see life coming out of a child blood blood spreading and when they would do that these wizards they would do that in a hall where they have assembled wizards now when they do that they hype the, their emotions and when their emotions are high they start cursing god they start cursing uh, people they start making declarations because they know that the words that we speak create so they start uh, uh, they start saying whatever they want to be seen on on our on our planet they start making declarations on businesses they start those now who can create sicknesses that's when they are high and that's when they come up with sicknesses and and viruses and bacteria that's when the wickedness increases so life is spiritual it starts there in the spiritual realm and now whatever whatever we see manifesting here physically is just what took place spiritually so from that whole uh everybody who is initiated in, in into satanism has to pass through that hole uh that is where they told me to sacrifice my brother my brother evans who follows me he comes after me and my mother and they, their blood was supposed to be presented on that altar 
and that altar, every one of them has to drink of it, including the one that has sacrificed. You saw a celebrity come out and say, my mother was sacrificed. But they can't control me. You see, it ain't no name I won't name. It's up. Man, I don't, I'm taking no disrespect from nobody, so let's get on the phone. Let's talk that out. I don't care who you are. I ain't taking no slice from nobody, right? I ain't taking no slice from nobody. It's God. That's the only person that I serve. My mom ain't here. My mama was sacrificed. My mom ain't here. My mama was sacrificed. That is what the devil does. He will ask, ask them to sacrifice the people that they love the most. And, and drink their blood. And drink their blood. So it's not just about killing the person. It's drinking their blood, covenanting them. Because Satan is the accuser of brethren. Even when he tells you to kill them, he wants their blood to be on your head. So for you to convince him that you're part of it, you have to drink from it. And that thing is tormenting. It can traumatize. That's why they lose their mind. They, they imagine you killing your mom and they give you your mother's blood to drink. Imagine how traumatizing that can be. Not only do they do that, they have to sodomize them. So this thing you're hearing about the queer community is not something that we can just laugh about. As a church, we've got to do something about it because the enemy, the enemy, Satan knows. He knows what he's doing. They know what they are doing. They have sold their souls. They know they have nothing to lose. And they want to initiate as many people as possible. So the other thing I saw while I was there were the demons. Many times we read about demons and we think it's just something. It's, you know, we thank God he has not allowed us to see certain things. Because if we had the ability to see these things that we cast out in the name of Jesus, some of you would have heart attack. In fact, a certain artist sang before he died, he had said his soul, he gave his soul to the devil, but he said, you give me heart attack, you turn me upside down. The things that they see, those people that have sold their souls to the devil are horrible. And thank God, Christians, you cannot see these things. God has just protected you from trauma. I saw demons. You can see a being that has eyes all over. You can see a skinny, a skinny being with mouth everywhere on the head, ears everywhere. And to make matters worse, even them, they are excited when they see a human being. You know why? Because we are created in God's image. They have a glimpse of who God is like when they see us. So when they come, to us, the human beings, they want to touch us, to feel our skin. They want to drink our blood. They want to drink life from us because our life empowers them. They don't have life. They cannot, man they cannot function on this planet uh, without us, the human beings. So when they drink blood, they are drinking our life so that they can now be able to function in a, let's say every generation is greater than the other. The things that my father can do now, I can even do greater things than he can do because his generation is weaker right now and our generation is powerful. So my children are going to be stronger than me and there are things they, that they will be doing that I cannot be able to do. So, and even their mind, their mind is smarter than mine. So I don't know how God created this. Now these demons, they come to us, the human beings. They want to drink our life so that they are able to understand the way we understand, mm. to survive longer, to function when they are strong in our generation, every generation, because they are ancient beings. So what they are interested in is the life, because the life of the flesh is in the blood. So when they drink, when they drink, they are drinking the life. Jesus loved us that he gave his life by shedding blood. He was giving his life to us. Now, Satan cannot do that. He cannot give us what he doesn't have. 
Jesus is life. So because he's life, he gave us life. But Satan, the Bible says, is a representative of death because he came to steal, kill, and to destroy. That is what he can give by stealing our life, by stealing our blood. He's also able to survive. He survives on stealing. So, Please don't forget what you were about to say. Mm -hmm. uh, in Psalms chapter 78, verse 25, mm -hmm. the Bible says, Man did eat angels' food. Mm -hmm. He sent them meat to the full. Mm -hmm. So this angels' food he's speaking of mm -hmm. is when God fed the children of Israel with manna mm -hmm. in the wilderness. Yes. So that means that Angels have food that they eat. That mm. means that they require sustenance. They need to feed. Mm. But now the question is, is God feeding them? Mm -hmm. No, we know he's not feeding them because Jesus told us that a kingdom divided against itself will fall. Four. So yeah. God cannot supply the food for his enemies. Mm. And so then what are they feeding on? They are feeding on humanity mm. uh, and the life that God has put inside of all flesh, including mm. animals, the life that God has put inside of human beings and any mammal and anything that lives that God has created, mm. they want to take life from that. They steal mm. life, the life force. Mm. And so um, that's amazing that you mentioned that. And then God did mention in the book of Genesis that from dust you are and to dust you shall return. return. That's what he told Adam. Mm. And then he, when he cursed the serpent, mm. he said, cursed are you above all animals, on your belly shall you go, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. Mm. So the consumption of flesh by the powers of darkness, it is consistent with what is written in the scriptures. Mm. Although it's not what the, the father desires, but mm. that's... That was the consequence. That was the consequence of, of sin. Man turning his back. Yes. And you, do you know what? Mm. It implies that those that live in sin become food for the serpent. Yes. Yes, in fact, those people who have joined the, the queer community, yes, the women end up getting cervical cancer, yes, cancer of the uterus, the men get cancer of the colon, yes, and cancer is when the bacteria are eating from the inside, yes, the person is rotting from the inside, yes, out. yes, and the Bible clearly states that the wages of sin is is death, yes, and so when you commit that sin. You give Satan the legal right to destroy you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So I I was also able to witness how he built his kingdom. I don't know whether it is him that built or he's just uh, he's just resting in a in somebody's property. But mm -hmm. the way the kingdom of Satan is built, it's built like in cages. And in these cages, there are huge rocks like gates. And when we were entering that, that cage, they opened seven gates. Demons, I'm, I'm talking about demons opening the seven gates for us to enter. And then when we entered is where we got to that hall. And in front of that hall is where I saw the throne of Saturn. And this throne of Saturn is built in form of a pyramid. And behind that throne was a mouth of a serpent open with two fangs on top and a tongue that came down all the way to where we were, like a red carpet. And uh, this tongue came from beneath the, the, the seat because Satan's throne is on top of the pyramid. So from beneath that seat is where that uh, tongue would flow all the way to where we were and the 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 eyes of the serpent were real when you see them covering uh, the that uh, one eye and do all those symbols they are telling you that they are in the brotherhood they have sold their souls to the devil when you see them throwing the sign of the pyramid they are telling you that they worship Satan they exalt the one that is sitting on that pyramid and the other thing that I witnessed with my eyes is that uh, Satan hates humanity with a passion. He hates us. He cannot stand us, but he has nothing to do. 
So his mission for us is to destroy us. You mean when you say he has nothing to do? He, he cannot he, do anything he can't about do anything us. about that. Yes. yes. Okay. He, he did not create us. Even if he tries to destroy uh, as many people as possible, there are those that God will save. So he cannot destroy us entirely. So the only way for him to have access to humanity is by taking humanity away from God. And that's what they are doing right now. They are trying to make us get far from God as much as possible. And the way they are going to do, uh, to do that successfully is by changing our DNA. When they successfully change our DNA, our blood, that's when now they can now control our feelings, our emotions, what we do, what we say, you know. There's so much that is going on, so we have to be alert as Christians. Don't just accept everything that they bring. And then the other thing I realized while I was there, I saw many companies and I saw many organizations that pose like they are for humanity, like for our rights. Human rights Human organizations. Rights. Those organizations uh, that, uh, that World Food something, uh, Health something, you know, so many organizations. I don't want to mention them because they know how to censor uh, videos, but a person of the spirit understands what I'm talking about. And I saw, I was so shocked. I said, I thought these people were for us. I thought the founders of this organization had passion for humanity. Even those organizations that were posing as if they are for peace, as if they are to unite uh, nations, as if you, I realized that these organizations belong to Satan. And the other thing you have to know is that most of these organizations have the symbol of, they have, they have either satanic symbol in their logo or they have the rainbow colors. So if you're observant, look at those companies. In fact, look at the company's logos. If you see a rainbow, if you see any satanic symbol in a company, in a logo, just know that that company does not belong to us. And that's why you see there is an increase in, in, in cancer, the spread of cancer, because people are eating poisonous food, things that are harmful to their health. They are polluting the environment. Man is not supposed to die prematurely, but because there are people that have sold their souls to the devil and they believe in depopulating. Satan is afraid of, of man multiplying. He is afraid of us having children. That's why they come with those family, you understand. So, when I I saw all that. I did not sit in one day, but remember, I served Saturn for 18 years. So when I saw that, I realized that all this while, I, I was living a lie, you know? When you're ignorant, the Bible says, my people perish due to lack of knowledge. So I had no idea of the enemy that was after me. If I knew that Saturn was like that, before I got initiated, I wouldn't have been there. I would have, I would have sought God more than ever before. I would have taken my salvation seriously because I grew up in a Christian family where I took things for granted. Every time I would have a nightmare, instead of calling upon the name of the Lord, I would call mommy to come and pray for me. So parents, empower your children. Teach them how to pray for themselves. Yes, it's okay if they trust you, if they call for help from you whenever they are in trouble. But it's, it's, it's very important that you teach them that the only way for them to survive is when they call upon the name of the Lord. Because the Bible says that those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So now I was coming face to face with realities of things I, I didn't know how to uh, overcome 
I was I was now in bondage and I didn't know how to get out of this bondage and every day I was getting to see different things in the kingdom of darkness. Now the thing that shocked me the most is one day we organized uh, that hall that I was talking about and we were going to have a meeting and Satan was going to chair that meeting. And guess the people I saw, the so-called big men and women of God, those ones that I had been seeing on TV before I got initiated, most of them I had seen them on TBN. I saw these brands, these pastors coming for a meeting and Satan was chairing the meeting and I was shocked. The way my mother loved some of them, even my dad, the way some Christians almost worship them. In fact, talking about these pastors, some Christians can hate you. I witnessed these pastors there in the kingdom of darkness. They were chairing, they were sitting in that meeting and Satan was giving them instructions on how to deceive many, if possible, even the very elect. And now you're beginning to see them. Of course, they cannot, they're also uh, in support of the queer community. They will not speak openly yes. to, to declare the word of the Lord concerning mm. the abomination, which is homosexuality. Yes. Yeah, they are so quiet on it. They are so nice to everybody. They are politically correct concerning yes. that message. Yes. So, I was so shocked. I saw big names. These are pastors who have private jets. These are pastors who have mega buildings, mega churches. These are pastors who have traveled all over the world. These are big, big names. You know, because this is not our platform, at some point we'll start mentioning them on our website. But for now, because this is not my platform, YouTube can take down any video at any time. So I'm avoiding mentioning names of these people. But just know I was so shocked. And in this meeting, that's when I realized that Saturn has a Bible school. In the Bible school, he trains people how to deceive. That's why many people don't even want to go to church anymore because they feel they have been deceived and taken advantage of. So, whenever Satan would appear um, and he's chairing that meeting, the only thing we would see when he's, um, when he's uh, ministering to the so-called pastors, we would see the horn and we would see the head, like the head of a goat. In fact, I don't know how I'm going to help parents, but stop following everything that comes like fashion, you know, and imposing it on your children. Somebody just start calling your child a kid and you call your child a kid. Are you a goat? For your child to be a kid, just a food for the thought. Children are children. If you're not going to call them like that, at least they have a name. So don't just allow anybody to call your children kid, kids. Am I correct? Because if you see the the young, whatever of a, of a goat is called. Yeah, sure. It's a it's a kid. It's a kid. But. Um... You know, it's funny because there was a certain gospel, so-called gospel artist. Artist, yeah. Yes, and um, I don't, I don't even like watching gospel artists anymore it, now. But uh, there was a certain one who poses as if he's a gospel artist, and for those who are spiritual, they can see that this is so obviously a, a complete sellout. Mm. But he he appeared on BET, and he he did a rap, and in his rap. He said that the lion and the lamb will bow down to, to the, the goat. goat. Yo, Kirk Franklin, give me 16. Heavy. 
like Biggie J and Nas, the great escape of both. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. Yeah. So, you know, this is the... It's, it's funny that you said that Satan appears in the form of a goat in those meetings yeah. where he's teaching supposed spiritual leaders. Yes, even those gospel artists, even those pastors, anybody that is in line with religion. And to make matters worse, I realized that when they were meeting, the, the Muslims, the Catholics, and those pastors in all the other religions, the, those from Buddha and all those other religions were also gathering there. So they were one. This thing that you, you see as the one world religion is not new. They have been cooking it. They have been preparing it. Because we tell you life is spiritual. It starts from that realm. And then whatever you're seeing here manifesting is something that they have already prepared spiritually. So we the Christians, we should also start now praying and counseling these things spiritually before we start now coming out to talk. We, yes, it's good we talk about it, but we, it's very important that we also deal with it spiritually. So I was now surprised. I saw so many books, different religious books, being opened and they were trying to see how they can bring all those books into one book. So I was seeing the the Muslims, the Christians, the Catholics, the Buddhists, and all the other religions, trying to see how they can revise all these books and then fit them in one book, to make and a, then ban all the other books, including the Bible. To make an Antichrist Bible. Yes. And as I speak, they've been editing our Bibles yes. and removing some powerful scriptures yes. from our Bible. But now it's going to get to a point where they are going to mix things from the Quran, things from other books, into one book with a Bible, something, some scriptures, and then they will ban the other Bibles. And for you to have the real Bible will be a crime. It will be like you smuggling drugs. That's why I, 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 I request Christians to get a hard copy Bible and then not only keep it, also read it. Let it be at your fingertips. Because that is the only way you're going to defend yourself from these evil spirits that they are unleashing. Because right now, they are opening portals. And in these portals, it's just not a portal that is being opened. They are releasing spirits. So that's why you see this thing, homosexuality, is increasing. You're wondering, why is it everywhere all of a sudden? Remember the sun. That sun, op that sun company opened a portal. CERN. Yes. C-E-R-N. Yes, it opened a portal. And in the opening of this portal, there are spirits that were released. And now whatever you're seeing is a manifestation of these spirits that were released. And even when you see in the Grammy Awards, it was an open worshipping of Satan. They were worshipping him openly, not hiding anymore. And they are blaspheming God openly. Yes. And they are, they are even, um, they are, they are even recognizing now the people from the queer community openly. They are not hiding anymore. You can see them worshiping. Uh, th there is a secular artist that I spoke about in one of my videos. This secular artist came up with a song, Searching for Love. He was dressed in a, in a, a pink, a pink dress, and then later they showed him he was dressed in a black dress surrounded with men who were wearing dresses. So this is the man who performed in the Grammy Awards. In the, there, in the Grammy Awards, he was leading people into satanic worship. Wow, and do you know what? The Antichrist will be a homosexual. Yes. That's what the Bible prophesies in Daniel chapter 11, mm. verse 37. Mm. Daniel prophesied concerning the Antichrist mm -hmm. and describes him saying, neither shall he regard the God, capital G, of his fathers, nor the desire of women, you see, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. So this Antichrist 
he does not uh, he is not attracted to women mm -hmm. he 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 flourishes in that environment where men are sodomizing men and women are defiling themselves with themselves and all manner of defilement because if, if, if they are allowed to marry men with men then there's there are no laws then mm -hmm. it's anarchy so anything goes a man can marry a child now Any, mm -hmm. I mean there's there's once you break the laws of God then there are no more laws to protect you <laughs> imagine in the American airport they are now putting um, urinals in the in the female bathrooms. Wow! So yes. our lady is going to use her bathroom, and then a man is on the other side because he says he ad identifies as a woman. Now, when you see that certain gospel artists attended those Grammys, mm. and they were there performing at those Grammys, these are among the compromised gospel artists that you are seeing. Satan has his own gospel artists claiming to represent God, claiming to sing for God. You'll see them there at the Grammys. In fact, we will play certain clips of that just so that you can see some of those who have completely sold out but pretending to do it for God. You cannot represent God on Satan's altar. The rapper sat in front of an empty chair and a mic that held Takeoff's chain as he rapped the lyrics. He was also joined on stage by Atlanta-based gospel group, Maverick City Music. And this thing is not just in the Western world, in Africa, it's there also in Nigeria. There are so many celebrities who have become what they are because of compromising their integrity. Men are now dressing like women and that, is, that has given them a platform a very big platform in the music industry, in the acting industry, and also in the fashion industry. Because Satan told, told me that he's going to, to destroy man through fashion and technology. Yeah. But fashion is a lifestyle, and technology is a system. A system he's designing to keep man in slavery, but through technology. Financial system. Yes, a financial system. And then the fashion is the lifestyle that he's promoting. Not, it, it goes beyond what people say that, oh, plating hair, no. It, it, it is like you see how the late Michael Jackson was dressing. He was dressing like a woman, yet he was a man, and he had hair, he had even gone ahead to do surgery. So Michael Jackson was promoting a certain lifestyle. And all these celebrities, the actors have put on dresses the main actors that have been given good roles, remember, they have put on dresses. And wearing a dress is a declaration of what took place in the secret place. They are telling you that this one has been sodomized. So now they are making fun of him publicly Which by is disgracing the, him. Yes, the public humiliation. Yes, so yes. they have to put on that dress to declare that they are part of the community. Yeah. So now, how many people have sold their souls? Have you seen any celebrity wearing a dress? Whether in Kenya or Nigeria or in America? I don't even want to, I don't even need to mention their names. Yes. Because you know them. Any celebrity you see wearing a dress when he's a man, just know that that person has sold his soul to the devil. So, you know, in serving Satan is when now I started realizing that, hey, this world is deeper than what I thought. I, I, I was taken at some point to a room that was full of skulls. And I was asking Satan, why is this place full of skulls? He told me you can only be in you, you, you're only allowed to walk in this place to a certain point. You cannot go beyond here. And I asked him why. And he told me, the people that go beyond this place are the leaders of this world. And these skulls and bones are testimonies against their lives. These are the people that they have killed. They, whenever they join the skull and bone society, they lead their nations to war. Yes, like the Skull and Bones 
presidents in the U.S. Yes. that have led America to, to war. Push. Yes. Oh. Okay. So, <laughs> so when <Oops>. they <laughs> sorry, when they take these people to war, many people die. Yes. So when these people die, for us we take them and bury them. But Satan has the scars and bones as testimony against them. Because the Bible says he's the accuser of brethren. Yes. So because people are hungry for power, they will sell their souls. That's why Jesus was asking that, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? I started by telling you that many, many leaders are in the occult, if I'm not mistaken, all of them. The presidents of this world, if I'm not mistaken, all of them have bowed to the skull and bone society. And that's why you see, when they are coming into power, there is war. People are rioting, people are killing themselves, people are shedding blood. And when they get into power, they start creating those situations of war. You see any president with that kind of, of sign, just know that that person is in the skull and bone society, including one, one leader that I saw, the world was praising him, the best African leader who loved his country so much that he, he refused to go back to power again, even when he had the opportunity and people still loved him. He wanted democracy and all that. He was a freedom fighter. He united the races in, in South Africa. You know that president. Yeah. I saw him, he was a member of Skull and Bones. So I, I was now shocked. Eh? I was now coming face to face with reality. And that's when I realized that it is not us that put presidents in power. It's a certain group of people that choose who will go into power. And how do they choose? They choose after that. They see how far this person is ready to go for power. If a person is so desperate, he will do anything to stay in power. When I say anything, it means kill, steal, and destroy. That's why many times people get disappointed. They fight because of politicians, and then when these politicians get into power, they don't even represent them. Yeah. So um, looking at, at now that uh, skull and bone uh, place, I was seeing the decorations, bones, some, some chairs made out of skulls, and uh, the place, the atmosphere is so scary, you know? As I told you that in the kingdom of darkness, those places are built like caves. But when you enter the cave, every cave you enter is a city of its own. So I cannot tell you that I saw the whole place called hell. I, I was allowed to go to some places depending on the ability I had to handle why Satan to handle certain certain information why Satan was revealing these things to me is because he had hope that I was going to serve him because I was coming from uh, I was a third generation of sorcerers so now uh, Satan was revealing to me these things because he knew I was one of them little did he know that Zechariah 9 11 had paved a way for me to escape from the kingdom of darkness I wish I knew that earlier. I would have escaped on the day that I had landed in hell. But God just wanted me to see some more um, tricks of the enemy and see how the kingdom of darkness functions and then get me out so that I can tell you what I'm telling you. Then uh, as he was revealing those things to me, he started now, uh, there are some things that now became more clearer to me for, for example, uh, he, was, he was showing me there are certain musicians. Well, there are musicians that are powerful and they are popular, but there are certain musicians that are, are untouchable. These musicians have influence worldwide, and they are invited on, uh, on big functions. Like, I'm talking about international big functions. And when they go there, they go there as priests. They don't go there as musicians. They go there as priests because they carry a presence. They carry a satanic presence. 
if one person had demons that were controlling a region just see how big our bodies are now i saw a certain musician they took me to the place where this musician had um, she had drunk from the cup the same cup from Jezebel and this musician was so wicked that Satan was revealing to me the number of people this musician has killed both in an, in, in the industry and out of the industry many people these people are what we see on TV is a mask when they bring out their real self even when they are performing sometimes the demons manifest in their faces you can see a demon in this musician's face manifesting what the things they are carrying if if god could allow us to just see what these people are carrying we wouldn't even want to look at them physically we are worshiping them because they are beautiful satan knows how to paint that beautiful image but inside them the demons they are carrying are so ugly and satan showed me anybody who drinks from this cup cannot be redeemed and he mentioned i think chris is saying oh let's pray for this musician no that physician has drunk from a, a cup a cup of iniquity that maybe it takes god himself <laughs> to come from the throne to deliver that person the amount of abominations they have blasphemed even the holy spirit jesus said there are some sins that can be forgiven but that sin of blaspheming the holy spirit cannot be forgiven so when they go and drink on that cup of iniquity there is no getting back there is no restoration there are some people no matter how you preach the gospel the the line they have crossed they cannot get back there are those whose souls have been captured that can be redeemed through prayer through the gospel but there are those who have crossed the line and i realized okay so satan asked me if i was ready to drink from the cup and i thought through it and by thinking through it he knew i was not ready yeah he, he knew that i still had some level of humanity yes some level of humanity now by the time you get to the point of drinking that cup you have crossed you have sinned and your consciousness has been totally seared seared yes no amount of gospel even if god himself came to preach to you the person has made up their mind and this musician that satan told me about who drank from that cup There's a time she blasphemed the spirit of God by saying that she used the Bible to clean her messes, her periods, the blood from her periods. And she really blasphemed in 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 one of her songs. She really blasphemed God. And now he told me when you get to this point of drinking from this cup, there will be no amount of witch doctor that can be with you. let's say your success and then you get down because i will give you power i'll give you influence i'll give you everything if you can only bow and worship me and that is the same thing he presented to jesus he said if if you can only bow and worship me i'll give you the wealth i'll give you the power i'll give you the influence i'll give you the riches i'll give you everything And the only way Jesus overcame him by quoting the word it is written. So when Satan presented it to me it sounded beautiful but because I had been deceived from the beginning like I did not enter satanism out of like uh, maybe I want to become a devil worshiper no I was just initiated. So I still had the fear of God in me even if they were trying to control my life and showing me some things even when they would present them the other seed that my parents had sowed in me that is the word of god could not allow me to do things beyond a certain level and that's why it is very important for parents to train their children the way they should go so that when they are not with them when they grow up they will not depart from from those ways imagine if i had drunk from that cup 
It meant my parents had not invested the word of God in my life and that would have led to my destruction and there was no way I was going to be delivered. So now Satan started training me on how to be witch. I went I was taken to a school where they perform magic. It is a school where they perform magic. This school is in the Indian Ocean. You see in India there are so many gods. Yes. The I don't even know how many gods they have in India. It's a pantheon of gods. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a god of rain, a god of the sun, a god of fertility, a god of everything, and a god of... Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when I was taken to, to that Indian Ocean, anybody who has involved themselves with magic, they, are, they go to that Indian Ocean and they, they bow to the queen of the coast. And the queen of the coast now starts training them on how to, how to, it's, it's, a, it's a world, let's say, it's a world of deception. A magician can tell you that this phone is turning into a glass of water. And they know how to manipulate a person's senses. And the person sees the glass of water, yet it is a phone. They, they were teaching me now how to use what they call the sixth sense, where you don't even have to see or to go to a place, but with the sixth sense, you can, you can now travel in the spiritual realm and be able to see even ahead of, ahead of time. So in that, uh, in that school of magic is now when Satan revealed one of his deepest secrets. He had, uh, he had the, the Bible says that when Jesus died, he went and he took the keys of hell from yes. him. Yes. And then he said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. The power that Jesus was talking about is the power that God had given man. And Satan had taken it from man when he deceived man. So what Jesus went to do was to restore whatever the enemy had stolen from us and give it to us. And then he commanded us to go into the world, preach the gospel, lay hands on the sick, and do the mission of the enemy, cast out devils. Because now we had regained our former position that we had, the, the relationship that we had with God yes. through Christ Jesus. So he said, whatever we want, we can ask for it in his name, and it shall be given to us. And whenever we pray in his name, he will answer. So, Satan now was revealing to me how we can take power from man and use that same power against man. How man is built on energies. So, if he was telling me that if you want to defeat man, you have to drink a certain energy or to make him drink a certain energy. Like, for example, if you want to steal somebody's destiny, you sleep with that person. And when you're sleeping with them, you're drinking a certain energy from them because that is where life is supposed to start, yes. through uh, reproduction. Yes. Yeah. So when you're sleeping with someone who is not your wife or not your husband, they are drinking your life energy. Yes. And when they drink that life energy, they leave you dry and they steal you. They steal all your life your let's say virtue. yes that, that virtue from you yeah. and then that's there are some men uh, he dates a girl when he's rich and then from the time he starts sleeping with a girl his business begins to go down yeah. and then the girl begins to prosper that girl has stolen the man's virtue yes and the man is an empty vessel wow. so Indeed, the word says, by means of a whorish woman, mm. a man is reduced to a piece of bread. Yes, yeah. So, uh, Satan, Satan now training me, if you want to disorganize somebody's life, you have to create an atmosphere, a conducive atmosphere, for you to drink the energies from him. If you cannot sleep with that person, anger the person. So, has anybody tried to get into a relationship with you, and then you... 
you turn them down and then they start now disturbing you on social media they start calling you they start bothering you and then now you're quarreling with them when you're quarreling with them they know what they are doing them they want to create an a conducive atmosphere and they are patient even if you insult them they are very patient the more you give them time to do their mission their assignment the more they create an atmosphere where they can drink the energy and when they drink your energy you find that you cannot pray anymore they have quenched you and then when you feel that you're being quenched you cannot pray the way you were praying they are quenching you then they start now doing whatever mission or assignment the enemy has given them to do in that person's life that's when they fall, start falling sick a person you start feeling headache you've been healthy you go to hospital they don't see any sickness but whenever you want to do something you just feel you know you're not okay headache sleepy and drowsy things like that just know that sometimes the enemy can be at work so he started teaching me about energies how how man survives on energies and how it is important for you when you go to a place to create an energy that is conducive for you that's why you see them meditating you see them uh listening to certain songs they will tell you before i'm going before i go for a match i have to listen to this song and then it will boost my energies and then i'll be able to go and perform the way you see me performing Yes, there's a certain NBA star mm. who spoke about listening to certain music right before a game uh -huh. and he did not want to be disturbed while he was listening. And talk about NBA, have you seen their logo? Oh yes. It's yes, a rainbow. Yes. Yeah, yeah, mm. they they they're glorifying that system of or that that queer movement mm. because it is that spirit of antichrist. Yeah. And in fact, I I wanted to mention that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and uh, actually chapter 2 mm. and verse 7 it the bible says for the mystery of iniquity does already work mm. only he who now lets will let until he be taken out of the way who's he the holy spirit mm. and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming so the mystery of iniquity is working and what the holy spirit is doing is he's preventing him from manifesting fully mm. however satan has discovered a way of how to grieve the, the holy, holy spirit, spirit until he lifts his preventative power mm. until he lifts his presence mm. and that is through homosexuality, homosexuality and defilement yes yeah, so as they continue to promote it and as you see rainbows everywhere you see that they have stolen because this kingdom of darkness is such a thieving stealing theft system of robbery mm. do you know what the 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 lord gave humanity and all of creation really the symbol of the rainbow mm. as a symbol of his promise and of his covenant that he should no longer destroy the earth mm. with a flood mm. but at that time when he destroyed the earth what he was destroying were hybrids he were just he was destroying the nephilim mm -hmm. he was destroying the offspring of fallen angels and human beings and then they had offspring and multiplied and the whole earth was full of hybrids and things that were never supposed to be joined together satan had completely perverted creation mm -hmm. he joined things with trees things with fish things with animals mm -hmm. things with mammals things with reptiles so he he completely uh uh defiled humanity or and uh, and creation so mm. god sent the flood to start from scratch mm. but when god sent those floods satan's children were destroyed mm. and the the fallen ones their children were destroyed mm. and so now what satan is doing through that symbol of the rainbow is now through that same symbol satan wants to destroy god's children mm. and the way he can, and the only way he can do it is by getting them to defile themselves mm. with themselves homosexuality being queer and all of this sexual deviance mm. grieve the holy spirit so the holy spirit is lifted and then satan can release his hordes and revenge what took place in the days of noah guess what even in that indian ocean i was seeing being half a fish half a human being half a crocodile a reptile yes. and half a human being half a horse yes. half with wings half a human being yes. 
have uh, I, I will sing you know animal even uh, there is a musician who sang about it said in a song hips don't lie I can see your body moving half an animal half a man yes. and I don't really know what I'm doing but we seem to have a plan yeah. He says, she says, my will and self-restraint have come to fail now because she has given her soul. Yeah. I, I'm doing what I can, but I can't, so you know, it is a little bit hard to explain. She's talking about this human, this, this, they are not human beings. They are, yes, they're they are hybrid. hybrid. They're Nephilim. Yes, half a pig, half a human being. Uh, half, and they have been bringing these things to our children, you know, a pig dancing in cartoon. Um, uh, teddy bears talking and you know our we think it's just innocent but children understand that language better than us the adults they are programming them for the hybrid that they are going to bring on this on this planet so that when the children see them they will relate this I used to see this when I was young now it's just Pepe Pig or something uh, manifesting you know so uh, I, I, I saw those beings the ones they call the mermaids, yeah. the, the fish, and then up, human, and then they also had their clothes. People tell me, talk about fashion. Their clothes are these that are tight here, and then down they spread, or they have a tail behind. That, that is, uh, the fa these people who are promoted. Fashion designers. The fashion designers, the big ones. They promote that because some of them are satanists. And they, 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 they create, it is art, so they create what they see, something that is unique, something that human beings don't have an encounter with, you know, on a daily basis. But have you ever seen somebody wearing a dress, but it is like, um, you know, a, like the scales, scales of a fish? Of a fish yes. yes. And then it is tight, and then it, 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 it opens you, up at the bottom. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so they have they have those kinds of of fashion, but people just wear not knowing, you know. That's why it's important when you're going to shop, you pray over. You just pray over your clothes, pray over the whole process. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. They have perfumes. They have they have dresses. They have. Um, I prefer plain dresses most of the time because I mean something that is plain. It's just a material that somebody, yeah, and even when I'm, I'm wearing the flowers, I'm very observant because people wear skeletons. There's a boy who wore an outfit, but all of it was a skull. You could really see the ribs, everything. Everywhere on the boy, he was dressed in, in skulls, skulls, you know. Uh, there are some, even clothes that have skeletons everywhere. My brother wore a t-shirt. And every time he would wear that t-shirt, he would be involved in an accident. It had a word, it would take your breath away. <laughs> it's just the Holy Spirit who revealed it to him. And then even in the shoe, inside his shoe, it, it, it had that same word, it would take your breath away. So him, he was just wearing the clothes are so nice. And the material they used to make these clothes are so good that they are long lasting. So a person can even grow with those clothes. And it's so beautiful because you don't even want to let go of it. You, you get so attached to it. By the way, our garments carry our presence. So when somebody wants to defile, to defile your presence, they take the garment and they defile that garment. So when you go to a place, let's say you have favor on, on your life. If somebody wants to take that favor, they will just steal your garment and they go perform ritual on that garment and defile it. And they say words that, may you be uh, a curse everywhere you go. Let everybody distance themselves from you. May you fail to succeed in everything that you do. So you go to a place and people just hate you for nothing. You don't know why, but because somebody took your clothes and they went and defiled them. Because your clothes carry a presence. So when you're going to give away your clothes, pray over them. Even I don't know if you've observed, when people are staying together and they are wearing the same clothes, they end up behaving in the same way. They, they end up doing things the same way because they start now sharing their, their, their energies. Let yeah. me put it in that way. So 
But when people get married, at some point they end up looking the same. They, they can even be looking like brothers and sisters, but they are married, different parents and the different countries, but they come together and then they become one. Because the more you stay together with somebody, the more you share the energies with that person. And, and that it is so powerful that you can even start thinking the same, reasoning the same way, and behaving in the same way, and even looking alike. Have you ever stayed with somebody who is your close friend, like a lady, she's your friend, and you start looking like sisters? And people are asking, are you sisters? You're like, no, she's my friend. And they're like, no. You know, because you speak the same language, you behave in the same way, you, you everything. Yeah, so uh, Saturn now started training me all the things in, in that school of magic. That's where I saw those beings. In, those be in, that, in, that, in that Indian Ocean, is when, from the time I went there, is when I stopped seeing myself in a mirror. I started seeing myself in a mirror after I got my deliverance from that day. But before my deliverance, I could not stand in a mirror. You've seen musicians singing about the man in a mirror. When a person is possessed by demons and they go in a mirror, they don't see themselves. They don't see their beautiful faces. They see the demons in them. The demons manifest. Their eyes don't see what you expect them to see. Unless they're astral projecting or summoning spirits, they don't stand in a mirror. So a mirror becomes a weapon for conjuring and summoning spirits. And because now this body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But now if the Holy Spirit is not in the body, then there are evil spirits in the body. So now these evil spirits, these people, because the, the, the evil spirits don't have a body, they are using a, a human body. So now when a person is going on a mission, they will summon the spirit. I want this spirit in order to, be, in order to, to do this mission. I want this spirit to do this and this, to enable me to do this and this. Let this spirit do this and this. Let, it, let this other one go ahead of me so that when I come, I find this and this has been done. They do that in mirrors. So when they come like a normal person and stand in a mirror, they don't want to stand in a mirror when, they, let's say, Tim is not a satanist, and I, and I am. I'm just giving an example. And we stand in a mirror. I can get exposed. Oh, so if you were demon possessed and mm. I was not. Yes. And both of us looked in the in, same, in same mirror. mirror. I would see the demons. You in would you. see the demons in me. So they don't want, and most of the time they wear shades. That's why when they are performing like that musician who was performing and the eyes started rolling and he started making satanic symbols, throwing the triple six and, and making the horns. Yes. Yeah. He, he, he did that, but it just happened. It, I don't think it was intentional. He was performing, and then the spirit started manifesting in him, and then people were able to see. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't want to be they don't want to be exposed, because the power of sin is in its secrecy. Yeah. So when when it is exposed, then there is no power there. So and then Christians start praying and people's eyes get open. The devil wants to keep people in ignorance. Yeah. yeah, so I never used to stand in a mirror when I was in that kingdom of darkness because the more they would reveal these things to me, the more they would covenant me. So even uh, meeting with the queen of the coast, you have to say some words, you have to vow to keep everything a secret. That's why you see them with that symbol where are they put? They, say, they the, always say, Yes, Shh. yes. You're not supposed to expose anything. So whatever you see there, like those hybrid people and, and the, everything, the fashion and their lifestyle and their, how they swallow people's energies, all those things, you're not supposed to say them. So th you have to vow. You have to make an oath because they reveal to you these things as you grow. Even them, they know that there is what they call spiritual growth. Just like we have the physical growth, there's spiritual growth. So the first day you get there, they don't show you everything. They keep uh, unfolding and unveiling things as you stay with them. The more you stay with them, they study your ability 
to digest some of these things. So one of the things that I saw in that world that was traumatizing, I saw this human being that was appearing like in the mouth of a serpent. You could see half of this human being like being swallowed on their altar. Mm -hmm. The serpent had swallowed the human being halfway. Legs first or head first? The legs first. Just the head. The person is raising their head like in agony. Yes. Yes. And it looked real. Like this is a real human being in a, in a serpent's mouth. Yeah. And the serpent is on their altar. And that is where they are pouring their sacrifice in pots. They pour blood. And you would see the pots have been put in shelves. Eh? And the blood is dripping. So to, that is their power of, that is their power center. Like I, I explained to you in the kingdom of darkness, in Satan's altar, the, there is a place where they sacrifice babies. That's why you see Molech, that uh, Molech uh, statue, they show babies on the side, babies raising their hands. Yes. Yeah, Molech is pleased when, when they sacrifice the babies. A certain company, you, I will not mention it, uh, you saw recently, a fashion company, you know, that yes. believes in sacrificing children. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so now Satan is altar is, is pleased with children's blood. Now, on the other altar there in the queen of the coast kingdom, I saw a serpent swallowing a human being. This is a woman and the breasts are out and she's raising her hands and, uh, and half of her is in the mouth of the serpent. And the serpent has expanded this upper part and down it is thin and it has coiled itself like you know uh -huh. yes on the altar and there is blood dripping on the on the walls from the pots that are in the shelves uh -huh. and that is the source of their strength in the indian ocean so the people who go there are businessmen business women basically people who want to prosper uh, in the economic system. Yeah. Yes. That serpent is swallowing a woman, mm. but it continuously swallows women, or it's just, it's, mm -hmm. it's I'm as getting this person. There. Uh -huh. So I realized the people who go there are people with big businesses like schools, hospitals, banks, yeah. uh, people in the economic system. Yeah. And these people, enter into a covenant with Saturn for wealth. And because they are wealthy, they are the ones who fund the politicians. A person with money controls the, the people who are in, in power, yeah. leadership. Yeah. Yeah. And there are those, it depends, they are in classes, ranks, they, they rank them. Now, why they took me there is because they wanted me to help these people who are in the economic system, who get power from the kingdom of darkness. They wanted me to help them get destinies of women. You know these slay queens? Yes. Slay queens who go to men who are rich for money. They go to Dubai. Yes. They are ready to do anything they or get, to be done get, to anything. They get flown out. Yes. <laughs> yes. They want to, to live the life but with a shortcut. Yes. Let me just warn you, those men you go to, go to the Indian Ocean and you are the sacrifice they are looking for. A man sleeps with a woman and that, wo that woman's life does not remain the same. They wanted virgins mostly and they were telling me since you're in that age bracket of where it's possible to get virgins, you're going to coordinate with these rich men. Giving you money is not a problem. You go to school and you like initiate a question because you're anointed. They would give you a, they would give me a stick or some oils, and they said when you're going to initiate this topic, just apply this lotion on your body, and then you go sit among the girls like any student and ask, is any of you a virgin? And when you start, they say, ah, who, who, who can be a virgin in this 
this uh, in this uh, generation ah virginity for what and a virgin will say i am a virgin because they are innocent yeah. then you say ah you're lying you say i'm a virgin you're lying i'm a virgin so that, those are the ones you mark so when you you know that so and so is a virgin rita is a virgin rose is a virgin and sharon is a virgin sarah is not a virgin i'll befriend rita rose and whoever say they are virgin mm -hmm. and because now i have identified them i go to those men i tell them i have identified three virgins and i need this and this or i need money to introduce them to you because most of these children come from poor backgrounds humble backgrounds their parents are hustling so parents i just request you to bring your children to listen to this because it's very important where you send them in schools tell them to be contented with what they have so now i the these men give me the money and me i would use that money to befriend the girls oh come let's go for lunch don't mind it's on me hey come let's go for the hairdo it's on me things like that and i say uh, my friend has a birthday party on Friday. Would you mind joining me that, on that birthday party? It's in a certain club. We can go together and come together. Uh, I have a cousin who will drive us there. And it's not my cousin. It's, it's that it's, man. It's one of the men who is acting like a cousin. And then another man who is acting like a birthday boy. And another man who is acting like his friend. But they, they are all in the occult. In me... I'm taking these girls and I'm also pretending like I don't know these men. I only know my cousin. And I'm telling my cousin, let me introduce you to my friend. And when I go the other side, I say, my sister. So th these ones know that I don't know the other ones. Yet I know them. You see how wicked the kingdom of darkness is. So we, go, we would go to these clubs. These men start providing the drinks. They start giving them money, you know, when they are dancing, they throw money on them. The girls are so excited. Some of them are from Christian homes. They, they, are, they are just beginning to see life. And they are seeing life on a high note. Expensive car with money. And when they are so excited about this money, I'm also uh, pretending like I'm excited, but I know the people that I'm with. And then I will dance, dance, dance before they know. I disappear. I leave them there. Then these guys act nice. They say, no, don't worry. We'll drop you to your campus. Don't worry. So they keep drinking, dancing. They are comfortable. My cousin is there, you know, even if I'm not being seen. I'm telling my cousin pretends like he's calling me and I pretend like I got caught up. But please bring my friends. Be, be good to my friends, you know. And they are also comfortable. Then these men, after hanging out with them, making them drink, some of them are not used to alcohol. They start dragging them and then sleep with these girls. And that's the end. They leave them empty. They can give them like two million, three million, a million, depending on what they feel like giving them. But those girls, they don't even graduate. They start, a man sleeps with them and they start now sleeping with everything, even a gatekeeper, even uh, they, they go everywhere now. They, it's not about money, the spirit in them. They have been left empty, their destiny has been stolen, but they have deposited a spirit in them. So that's why I was taken there. I was working for a former vice president. I will not mention his name, but most Ugandans have seen this guy with young girls and and uh, you've seen him with campus students that is their source of power you've seen him in a shrine before i'm not talking about somebody you don't understand is a sorcerer and they take these children to they take them to a certain island there is an island in uganda where the rich men go and pick these girls and deflower them and leave them empty with just a few million shillings uganda shillings they deflower them. Yeah, and there are many people in influential places, high power places, like positions. Yes, they are. The rich, the ri they even have boats where they take these girls, they, they, they are free boats, take them to that island. There is a certain man, he was, uh, he was working for the government. I will not mention his name, but the Ugandans know him. He had a band. That band is, that band is 
not working anymore. The, the, the band, the music band, it's not, it's not working anymore. But there were some popular secular artists that were working for him in that band. It starts with F. So you know what I'm talking about. So we would take these girls to that island and in that island, on that island, these girls would meet with those rich who is who uh, guys and then they would sleep with them, leave them empty, begin to rise in positions of power and give these girls a few million Uganda shillings, even dollars they can, because what they are going to get is greater than is greater than the whatever dollars, they whatever they have given them. Even if they wanted the car, they can give them because it's, some girls, after sleeping with them, in a few months they die. Some are sacrificed, some are left empty. So that was the reason as to why I was taken there. I talk about it not because I'm excited about what I used to do. Of course, I regret and I talk about it to open your eyes so that you don't become a victim of the system of darkness. Girls, value your body. Let no man deceive you with a few shillings, even if it's dollars. It's not worth your soul. Even the boys nowadays, the boys are also being used. So don't be deceived by any man or woman. Men, don't sleep with those sugar mummies. Those sugar mummies have slept with the queen of the sea. Yes, don't let any organization pay you to wear a dress if you're a man. Yes. Don't let any organization turn you from being a lady into a lesbian just because they're giving you money and they're teaching you that this is human rights and that mm. all human rights have to be respected. They disguise the spirit of Antichrist with human rights. Mm. And we're not against human rights. We are all for human rights. In fact, Christianity teaches us to love one another. another. So anyone who loves you will not violate your rights. So. Uh, these are the strategies of the kingdom of darkness and Jesus prophesied that that which is done in secret will be revealed. If you see these things finding expression on the earth, you're seeing men starting to dress like women. You're seeing them post pictures of themselves dressed as women, dancing like women, you know, putting on makeup and just the whole, the, the, the effeminization of the man. It is part and parcel with the spirit of Antichrist. Anywhere you see it, you know that that spirit is at work. Anywhere in the world right now. I mean, even the president of Ukraine was a was an actor and a and a dancer. And you can see this man dressed up. He had he's topless. He's in high heels and he's dancing with men. So we know that that whole operation in Ukraine and everything. This is this is part of it. the whole world is a stage. The whole world is being manipulated by the evil one. The Bible says that the whole world is in the, the power of darkness. Mm. And that darkness is witchcraft, sorcery, the power of sin, the power of darkness, the power of deception, utilizing the three areas of man's weakness. One, the lust of the flesh. Two, the lust of the eyes. And three, the pride of life. If Satan can get any one of those entrances into a human being, he will utilize them. If the person is greedy for gain, Satan has you. If the person is lustful for the opposite sex, Satan has you again. If the person is too proud, is, is full of pride or through the pride of life, I have this, I have that, I'm in this position, I'm through that pride, I'm good looking, I'm beautiful, I'm well connected, I'm if you have pride in your own achievements or in your own appearance or in some kind of narcissistic belief system that makes you believe that you are above everyone else, that is a narcissistic system of pride that Satan can use to gain inroads into your life and use you. Mm -hmm. And so humility, that's why the Bible says by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Mm -hmm. It's by humility. Yeah, and then parents also, if you sent your child to university and then your child came back driving after one semester, take an initiative to find out where the child got the money from to get a car. Because uh, these men, 
because they had money they would buy these girls vehicles after destroying their future and these are the girls now who are trusting God for marriage and they can't get married because the virtue was taken they can't get married again they can't have children they have gone to different hospitals their, their uteruses are okay the doctors don't find any problem with their uterus but because they slept with a man who sacrificed their uterus they can't bring life with their uterus even if they conceive they are miscarrying you there's a lady who came out and she said she had miscarried 10 times 10 times that is spiritual so uh, parents be mindful don't just accept everything that your children bring you know mommy some this man i'm dating this man this man has given me a vehicle because you don't have a car and then you also say god has blessed my daughter with a rich man no take an initiative to find out why this man is giving your daughter a car probably your daughter is a sacrifice this man has sacrificed your daughter and you know satan knows he knows the law the bible says he's the accuser of brethren so when he does something like that to you he'll give you something that will make you happy so that there was a trading that has taken place like a butter trade give me your star i give you a car Give me your star, I splash some few dollars on your face. Give me your star, I do that. But they will not tell you, so they will do it illegally, so you will be signing. So don't accept anything you're not ready to take. Don't just be somebody who receives everything. When somebody is giving you something, ask, why are you giving me this? What is your motive? If, you, if the motive is not clear, then turn it down. You will not die. After all, you were surviving before it came. So don't be so desperate for material things because sometimes the enemy uses them to trap and to put people in bondage. So there are girls who are suffering. There's a girl who slept with one celebrity and she lost her mind. This time I had warned her. I told her, don't go. She said, no, not everybody has an opportunity to meet with this guy, Erica. Let me go. She insisted and she went. A few weeks after going, I told her one thing you're going to expect from that guy, he's going to sleep with you. And when he sleeps with you, your life will not remain the same. She was at university and she went. Her name was Sarah. I will not mention the other name. And when she came back, two weeks after, she lost her mind. This is a brilliant girl who was doing public administration. The students who studied with me know, know the girl because I warned her while they were listening. So. Life is spiritual, friends. We just tell you all this not to scare you, but to make you aware of the enemy's devices. Don't be a victim. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. And in the book of Revelation, chapter 18, a certain angel was sent to speak. And the words that he was speaking was a prophecy, or he was speaking of the destruction of the civilization of the kingdoms of darkness and that means that he was speaking concerning the cities that we see today the biggest cities that you see today namely New York etc the big cities where uh, of central finance of global finance of worldwide finance and in Revelation 18 part of what he says is and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So the Bible is teaching us that by sorcery, all the nations of the earth have been deceived. And the merchants of the earth, the merchants, the big businessmen, the billionaires that the people are worshiping ignorantly, these people are enriched by the power of sorcery. No one just rises in this world. No one just rises to astronomical heights of success suddenly mm. without spiritual power behind them. There should be anybody who rises, anybody who becomes prosperous, they should be able to tell you about God, about Jesus Christ, about obeying the principles of the Word of God. And it's not an overnight thing. It's not you snap your fingers and you're rich all of a sudden. Mm. No, God is not a magician. He's not, he's not, you know, a genie in a lamp where you snap your fingers and he just gives you everything you want. No, no, no. 
but God can cause you to grow in such a way that as you mature, you begin to acquire the things that you need to fulfill your purpose and destiny and raise a family to do the same. Mm. Now, so he says, by your sorceries were all nations deceived. He said, these people who were deceiving the nations were the, were, were the rich merchants. And a merchant, if you break down the word merchant, M-E-R chant, a merchant. Mer is the same, M-E-R, the same prefix you put before the word mermaid mm. or merman. It's a water maid or water man, watery environment man or person that dwells in the environment of water, that mm. loves water. A merchant is a wealthy businessman, but the way he became wealthy is the water and he 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 utilized the water and he promoted he performed enchantments sorry mm -hmm. and those enchantments are rituals in other words he did water rituals in order to become wealthy so what erica is saying about the queen of the coast and about the indian ocean and about the wealth that comes from the waters mm -hmm. is in line with the word of god the merchants were the great men of the earth the water enchanters mm. and if you look at some of the biggest the biggest businesses one coffee business one business that is synonymous with coffee in america yes. has the symbol of a mermaid mm. with her legs spread and she's wearing a crown yes. and a star on her head mm. they yeah. steal stars yes the, they steal stars these are these are um the theft of the stars and the destinies of men has been going on since Adam. And if you look at, even at the beginning of Paramount Pictures, you see that there's a mountain and then there are stars up above them, that mountain in a circular formation. Mm -hmm. And then those stars suddenly, Ford. they come down and Into they- the lake. Uh, yeah, they come onto the waters mm -hmm. and, then they, and then they fly off. Mm -hmm. And it's demonstrating the way the stars of man uh, are sorry. stolen. The even, destinies are stolen. Even Joseph, he dreamt about uh, the, the other stars bowing to his star. Yes. Which meant he was great. His he destiny. was going to, his destiny was to be great. Mm. And also, when Potiphar's wife wanted to sleep with Joseph, Joseph, she did not understand. But you see, even Potiphar's wife was not a straight up, a, a straight to woman. She wanted take his star. Even Potiphar's wife was only married to Potiphar because she had already performed witchcraft to get him in the first place. Mm. She was trying to rise through the ranks. She needed a powerful man. Mm. So she lured and got a hold of Potiphar to steal his energies. Mm. And now when she looked on, this, she was a witch. She when looked she like looked Joseph. at Joseph, she saw a brighter star than Potiphar's. Potiphar's. And the way to get that star, like you sleep said, with him. sleep with him. And so anybody who's immoral out there, you need to understand that your destiny is being stolen. Mm. People who sleep around, people who fornicate. Samson. Samson. When he slept with Delilah, he his slept energies. With Delilah, his energies began to be taken. And we can go on and on all through the scriptures. In fact, in Proverbs chapter 5, it talks about more, very specifically how your destiny can be stolen by sleeping around. Um, in fact, let me just turn there quickly. In Proverbs chapter 5, he said, he said, My son, attend unto my wisdom. Bow your ear to my understanding, that you may regard discretion, and that your lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell, lest you should ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable, that you cannot know them. Hear me now, therefore, O you children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove your way far from her. Who is she? The immoral woman mm. or man. Mm. Come not near the door of her house, lest you give your honor unto others and your years unto the cruel. It's right there in the Bible. Oh my God. You give your honor to others. You mm. give your years, the years of your labor. Your energies. Your energies, your virtues, everything that God has for you, 
He has placed it on your inside. And so the only way Satan can steal it is to persuade you to enter into sin so that he can steal your virtues, he can steal your energies, he can steal every, all of your title deeds, your log books, your achievements in life, your certificates, your education, your reputation, your health, everything, God has placed it inside of you. It's in spirit form with a time lock release. It will be released at a certain time when you come of age that logbook for that vehicle will come. When you come of age, certain title deeds for lands, for buildings, when you come of age, certain relationships will come into uh, and find expression. But if you defile yourself, Satan is stealing those relationships. Mm -hmm. That's why sin is being advertised. That's why men are dressing like women. Mm -hmm. That's why abominations are being advertised as if they are normal. Mm -hmm. To take away from you purity, holiness, righteousness, to rob you of your destiny, to rob you. And after you start sinning, especially in sexual immorality, life becomes very difficult. You become more and more desperate. Now, just because you come from a poor family, you might be, you might be desperate because you come from a poor family and yet you're a virgin. It's true because people's families have been robbed by the powers of witchcraft and by the powers of darkness, mm. okay? But as the light of the gospel of the kingdom of God is made manifest and people come out of darkness, they begin to prosper as God with godly prosperity and righteousness. Wherever there's righteousness continuously, you will see godly prosperity. Mm. The Bible says the path of the righteous man shines brighter and mm -hmm. brighter unto the perfect day. So prosperity is part of you know, the lifestyle of a righteous person, especially if you live in a country where, where Christianity is allowed. Mm -hmm. And most of us live in countries where you're allowed to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. So, lest you give your honor unto others and your years unto the cruel, watch this, lest strangers be filled with your wealth mm -hmm. and your labors be in the house of a stranger mm -hmm. and you mourn at the last when your flesh and your body are consumed mm. and say, how have I hated instruction and my heart despised reproof. You despise the correction mm. that we're trying to give you and crying out. And HIV positive, they're infected. They're infecting women, of course. Through the violation of the laws of God, Satan has you. Mm. Watch 13, verse 13. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. How sad is that? I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Drink waters out of your own cistern and running waters out of your own well. Let your, in other words, he compares the act of sex as like drinking waters. Mm. The act of intimacy is like drinking water and drinking a lot of it. Let your fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only your own and not strangers with you. The translation of there is wrong. Really what he's trying to tell you is that let your fluids, your bodily fluids, mm. your sperm, the female fluids, let your fluids be between you and your wife mm. and not all over the streets and not all over the place where anybody can just pick them up. Mm. Don't, don't, don't put your sperm in places where a witch woman can take that sperm to a shrine and, use it. and remote control your life. Mm. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. He calls your reproductive organs your fountain, fountain. the fountain of life. life. Yeah. So he says, let it be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breasts satisfy you at all times and be ravished always with her love. And why will you, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? For the ways of man are before the Lord and he ponders all his goings. His wickedness, his own iniquities shall take the wicked himself and he shall be holden with the cords of his sin. He shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly, he'll go astray. Mm. So, so, you, so you see, the Bible is warning you, and I believe that people go through a process as the Holy Spirit continues to work in you and give you the Word of God and, and teach you the secrets of the kingdom of darkness. He's working 
to bring you into a place of purity. God mm. wants a pure bride for his son. You know why it has not been easy for people to keep pure? Is because they have been promoting sexual perversion in every movie, in yes. every song. In, yes. There has to be a half naked somebody with a half naked somebody. Like they are, even when it is an ad, an advert, you know, it's a mattress ad, it's a half naked woman advertising the mattress. If it's a car, it's a, a, a man driving, a half naked woman. They, they, they know what they are doing because they know that's the only way they can get you and you know he uses people's ignorance but when you know who you are you the enemy cannot get you he cannot get you for anything in the world because nothing in this world can can buy your star nothing so you'll see a young lady trying to go get a job and a man and and the boss will say if you'll sleep with me you can get this job or if you'll sleep with me you can get this promotion I want or if you staff. sleep with me you can get this part or if you sleep with me you can get this record deal or what have you what he's saying really is i want your star i want your destiny i want your virtue to empower myself at your expense mm. so the lady who refuses to be defiled she won't get that part and she'll be disappointed and she might enter into a situation of desperation for a time. However, she will get to know the aspect of God who is the vindicator of the righteous. Mm. If you are a righteous being, if you are a righteous person, you reject the kingdom of darkness, you reject Satan's system. What the world will say is that you have been cast into the furnace mm. of poverty, of lack of you know you've, you've been cast out of your job you, lo you lose your house you can lose everything however you have not lost your destiny you have not lost your star joseph kept it mm. and got cast into prison but see the result but do you see the result he became a prime minister the vindicator that 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 aspect of god who vindicates the righteous you need to know god as the vindicator that means that when the system of corruption offers itself to you, when Babylon offers itself to you, when Egypt offers itself to you, when Pharaoh offers you a shortcut, you have to refuse. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the result is that you'll be cast into the furnace of affliction. Mm. But inside that furnace, that's where the vindicator, the Son of God, shows up standing with you. That's mm. where mantles are received. That's where revelation and wisdom is imparted. That's mm. where you become who God created you to and be. In Uganda, there is a tribe. When a man is circumcised, they tell him, look for a woman after you are healed, sleep with that woman, and all your problems, eh? the curses, everything that has been hindering you from succeeding, deposit it in that woman, and don't sleep with her again. Look for a wife. So are you that kind of person they are going to deposit all their filth in because people go to shrines and they tell them you have this and this take this hub and then sleep with this go and pick a prostitute sleep with them deposit whatever you have in them and then move on your life will get better so they are, they use people as objects even women they, they, there is a woman i know because i worked for her and she's in in a big position she, she by then she was in one of the biggest positions. She was sleeping with young boys. She would sponsor them because they were coming from humble backgrounds. She would sponsor them all the way to university. But in order for them to get school fees, she would sleep with them. Tuition, she sleeps with them. Her reason for sleeping with them is not because she was lustful. She wanted their stars and she's really shining with people's stars. And one time, she took journalists to record her when she was thanking her gods in a shrine. I'm talking about people that I know are serving the devil, and I'm not just giving you a story. I'm telling you about things that I witnessed with my eyes. These are people that I worked for, and those of you who follow the news in Uganda know the person I'm talking about. She, she's of a high position, and when you look at her status, she doesn't have children, She's never been married, and uh, she's HIV positive. Because of their life, 
like that uh, former vice president I'm talking about, because of their life, his covenant with the devil is to sleep with a virgin girl every day. Every day. So you will not even have, you get to a point where you don't have time to test them, to see their status. They get tired. That yoke becomes so heavy on them. So they just start sleeping without testing. And that's how they get infected. And that, that is how they spread the infection. So they are, they are fed up of their lives. They can kill. They can do anything. They are tired. The yoke is heavy on them. They have to sleep with a virgin girl. And they, they, when they sleep with one girl, they don't sleep with her again. They will tell her, if you have a virgin friend, bring her, I will pay you. Because they, they need to satisfy that altar with blood and with stars, with destiny. Remember, the devil does not create, but he steals. And he gives what he has stolen. And something that has been stolen is not long-lasting. It's just for a short time until the person you have stolen from discovers and reports you to police and starts investigating. Before you know, he's arrested. And that's why you see these people who sell their souls to the devil shine for a short time. Because when the person discovers that my star has been stolen and they start investigating and filing a petition before God when they are praying, I'm telling you, the Bible says, do not despise a thief when he comes to steal to satisfy his stomach. For when he's caught, he will pay seven times. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. So that is what happens. That's why you see them shouting in their vehicles. They are just driving. He parks on the side. He starts shouting. Sometimes they are found in cars when they have died or in their offices. One of them who used to sleep with students, he had schools, campuses. Even Kenyans used to take their children there. He had even a, a university. He just collapsed and died in the bathroom. When a parent finds out that the daughter's star has been stolen and she starts filing petition before God through prayer, of course, that is how they end. For the wages of sin is death. I know there's so much to talk about. If I start describing hell, we will not finish. And we want to make this video at least viewable. In the next video, I'll describe hell. I'll let you know how hell looks like, the hell fire. Uh, what I saw and what is in that lake of fire, I will describe all that in the next documentary. Amen. Mm. Now the good news is that even those who have lost their virtue, even those who have lost their purity and their holiness because of sin, they mm. did not know these things before. Mm. And because the thief came to steal, kill and destroy, he stole what belonged to them. And the years have passed. Mm. And they don't know how to get that star back. But the good news is that Jesus restores the stars of men. Mm. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes. In Joel chapter 2, verse 25, he says, and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, mm -hmm. the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And so... These palmer worms, the caterpillar, the locust, what do they do? They steal the energies of man. So while you are doing the act, there is a spirit there. That spirit was the one that tempted you to do it in the first place. It engineered the entire sin scenario. And because you agreed to do it, you lost that which was precious. Mm -hmm. But God is saying that I will restore the years what is he saying? I will restore the time you have lost. I will restore the virtue, the energies. I will restore the calling and the destiny and your identity. I'm able to restore everything that you lost. Mm. And it is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Without Jesus dying on that cross, there's no way there could have been any payment for the restoration of your star, for mm. the restoration of your destiny, mm. for your identity, for everything. And that's why in Colossians says, blotting out the handwriting mm -hmm. of ordinances that was written against us, that was contrary to us, mm -hmm. and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Mm -hmm. So those ordinances were written against you because of the sins that you were committing. Mm -hmm. In the physical world, only you and the person you were sinning with could see that you were sinning. Mm -hmm. But in the spirit realm, everyone can see you. Mm -hmm. 
There is no privacy in this world. Mm. Spirits are watching. Even the spirits of just men made perfect are also watching. watching. Angels are watching. Mm. Devils are watching. Demons are watching. Fallen angels are watching. Mm. And God is watching. Mm. So there's a huge crowd watching you. Mm. Don't think you have any privacy in this world. There's a, there's a huge, there are trillions of beings that are watching what is happening on, on the earth. So and when they so, are praying, like mm. what you're saying, when they are praying, they, they have to use that scripture when yes. they are reclaiming their destiny because yes. a transaction was made. Yes. And the enemy is holding on to that and using it. Yes, based on that transaction, based on that sin. Yeah. So when you plead the blood of Jesus, mm. you are asking for what was taken from you. Mm. Because a payment was made. Mm. And if that payment was made, then I have no more debt. Mm. And if I have no more debt, you cannot keep my stuff. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I get my destiny back. I get my purpose back. Mm. I get my star back, my mm. relationships, my networks, mm. my logbooks and my title deeds, my favor, the energies, mm. everything. And plus an addition, plus more seven. favor. Seven plus, times. Plus seven times what was taken. Yes. For it is written, the thief, if he be found, must restore sevenfold. Seven. Yea, he must give all the goods of his house. Mm. That's why for every soul that is saved, Satan gnashes his teeth. Mm. As we are praying for people and demons are being cast out, Satan is being burned with every soul who is delivered. Satan is burned because you are delivered by fire. Mm. It's not just ordinary words we're speaking here. These are powerful words. He said, it's not my word like as a fire, says the Lord, mm. and like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces. Mm. So as the word goes forth and people are being delivered in prayer and in, in revelation and in the re revealing of light, people are being set free by fire. Mm. And that fire burns the devil. It mm. burns demons. It breaks chains. Because the word of God is like a fire and like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces. Mm. So as these things, as the, the kingdom of darkness is being destroyed, you see how it is being destroyed? Mm. By the word of God mm. and by the revelation of truth. Mm. And as it comes out, wow, the powers of darkness are being destroyed. And that's why in Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says, and I saw a woman. Mm. And he's talking about the church, the glorious church. Yeah. And upon her head was a crown mm. with 12 stars. Wow. And she was clothed with the sun, meaning that she's clothed with the glory of God. Oh. And under her feet, there was the moon. Mm. And the moon represents the powers oh, of darkness. darkness. Wow. Witchcraft was under her feet. Yeah. So do you see what's happening now? The sins you used to commit, you won't commit them anymore. Mm. That means that witchcraft is losing its power. Mm. That means that the moon is under your feet. Mm. And you're clothed with the glory of God. And on your head, a crown that has been restored. Hey, mm. hey, hey. This is mm. big. This is huge. This is huge. Wow. <laughs> this is colossal. This is, this is the most beautiful thing. This is the wow. beautiful story. This is the most beautiful thing that has ever happened to any human being, period, bar none. There's nothing more beautiful mm. that can happen than, than the rescue operation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. And so beautiful are the feet of those that preach the, the gospel. gospel. Send this message everywhere. Mm. Send it to everyone who will listen. Forget about those who won't listen. Some will ridicule you. So be it. That's mm. a cross I'm willing to carry. If you mm. say I'm crazy for talking about these things, so be it. It's mm. a cross I'm willing to carry. carry. Yeah, your salvation is worth more to me than my ego. Mm. Whatever you think of me doesn't matter. But send this video to somebody, teach somebody, tell somebody about Jesus. Put this message out there. Let your light so shine before men mm. that men may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And mm. Jesus is saying, behold, I come soon and my reward is with me even to give every man according to the works he committed in his body. Wow. <laughs> wow. Glory to God. Wow. Glory to God. Mm. Let's pray for the people and release them. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every soul that's under the sound of our voices. I pray, Lord, that this truth may enter into their hearts, that they may not forget that the thief that comes to steal may not steal the word that has been deposited in them, mm. may not steal the truth, may not cast a spell of doubt upon their minds and cause them to doubt and not believe the things that they have seen and heard through Erica's testimony and by the revealing of the word of God. I pray, mighty Father, that every strategy of the devil to cause this word 
to be cast by the wayside or cast into stony ground or to, to be cast into thorns. Let their hearts be good hearts, good and healthy soil to receive the word of God and let them bring forth some 30, some 60, some 100 fold, even as the Lord Jesus said. Let them guard their virtue. May they guard their holiness and their righteousness. May they see their righteousness and their uprightness as a badge of honor. May they guard themselves against sexual immorality and sexual defilement. May they be that remnant whom the Lord can depend on, who looks, who, whom the Lord looks upon and can see purity, righteousness, holiness, integrity, that church that is spotless without spot or wrinkle, that perfect church that has no spot on their garment, not perfect because all of their deeds and all of their lives were perfect for, since the day they were born, but perfect because they have been washed in the shed blood and the light of truth beams from within them. Mm -hmm. And because they walk in this truth, they please the Father. They, they, they are full of joy, not because of the circumstances that they're in, whether they're good or bad, but because the one who dwells in them gives them life and gives them joy. Their life is regulated from the Holy Ghost, from the Spirit of God, not from their circumstances. Mm -hmm. And so, mighty Father, we honor you and glorify you. We pray for those who lost their destinies or they lost their purpose. They lost through defilement, through immorality, through unrighteousness, through corruption. Mm -hmm. They lost that most precious thing that you had placed inside them. Mm -hmm. We plead the blood of Jesus over them. Even as they are repenting now, even as they are saying, Lord, forgive me for A, B, C, D, for everything I committed. Lord, we pray that you, you forgive them and that you blot out their transgressions and that you blot out the handwriting of ordinances that was written against them. And we pray that their stars may be restored, that their destinies may be restored, that their virtue may be restored, that their favor may be restored, and that the energies that you gave them to fulfill their purpose may be restored, and that for the time they have left, they may live a life that is pleasing in your sight and fulfill the mission and purpose of the expansion of the frontiers of the kingdom of God mm -hmm. for the glory of your holy name, Father. Mm -hmm. We pray for their total restoration. We pray for their total healing for those who are sick because sin brings sickness and disease. Mm -hmm. We pray, we cast out devils right now, whoever's mm -hmm. under the sound of our voice. We cast out infirmity. We cast out the spirits of fornication. Mm -hmm. We cast out the spirit of adultery. Mm -hmm. We cast out the spirit of ungodliness, yes, uncleanness. We cast out the spirit yes. of homosexuality, LGBTQ. We cast mm -hmm. you out. You foul spirit of antichrist. We mm -hmm. cast you out in the name of Jesus. Jesus. You foul spirit of deception that causes one not to understand that life is spiritual, that their deeds of sin have spiritual origin. We mm. cast you out in the name of Jesus. Yes. That spell that comes upon men and causes them not to believe that life is spiritual, not to believe that the life that they are living is manipulated from the spirit realm. We cast out that foul spirit mm. and we break the power of the enemy, the power of spells that keep men in darkness. We break those spells in the name of Jesus and we speak the light of the Word of God. We release that light. We release the power of the Holy Ghost mm. to bring them into all truth mm. and to bring them into the realization of the knowledge of God. Mm. Finally, Father, I pray that they may be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. The eyes of their understanding being opened that they may know one, what is the hope of your calling? Two, what is the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints? And three, what is the exceeding greatness of your power in us who believe according to the working of your mighty power? That same power that you demonstrated in Christ when you raised him from the dead and set him at your own right hand, far above principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. We pray that you may reveal these things, that you may find a holy and ready and well-prepared church without spot or wrinkle. We bless your name, mighty Father. We honor you. And we pray a blessing upon every last soul that has been able to watch this video till the end. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we conclude, Amen. Yeah, that uh, serpent that I spoke about that was following a human being. Yes. If you look 
at uh, the beneficiaries of the marine kingdom, the biggest beneficiaries are the pharmaceutical companies. Pharmaceutical companies, yes. And these companies have that logo of either a serpent cord around something, yes. or a serpent on something, or a rainbow, or it, it's, it's one of them. Yes. So they explained to me that one of their biggest uh, beneficiaries is a pharmaceutical company. Pharmaceutical company. Pharmaceutical company. Mm -hmm. And then these pharmaceutical companies, they create these va bacteria, the viruses, and spread them, and then they come with solutions. Yes, of that's, course. That's their game. That's their game. Order yeah. out of chaos. Yes. They create a chaotic situation and then provide the solution. Yes. And, and then you paying for it is really what they want. What they want. And then he also explained to me there is a lady. In, she's based in South Africa. She's a Ugandan. Everybody knows her. She's always making white parties, purple party, red party, black party. Yeah, the white, all white party. Yes. Now, when she goes to the clubs, many girls follow her. The innocent girls who are also hoping to make it in life like her. Yes. And the rich men, the ones I was talking about, also go in there because they are able to see a girl that has not been deflowered. They can see they have marks. Virgins have marks. The, the people who are spiritual can see that that is a virgin. So they go for those girls and then they deflower them and they leave them empty. And that's why she's shining. Wow. And in fact, and that woman is a she's an ex to a certain musician in Tanzania yes. who's also spreading immorality and sexual perversion. Everywhere he goes, yes. yes. And if you look at the symbol for a certain vehicle called Alfa Romeo, Alfa Romeo or Alfa Romeo, if you look at the symbol for that vehicle, it's a serpent and it's eating a human being. Mm. Legs first, yes. the same way you described. Yeah, there are so many companies. You look at the logos. Just, just look at the, at the logos. logos Let your companies. eyes be opened. Yes. Amen. 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 May God bless you. May God preserve you. May God cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and do you good. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.